Welcome back to Burn the Haystack with Josh and Jesse. Conversation all about culture, faith, and memes. Gotta love those memes, staying updated daily with Absolutely. the memes. Absolutely. You gotta stay updated. I mean, it's just one of those things. It's a, uh, it's it's currency. It's uh it's an economy. You gotta stay up with it. <laughs> we can trade memes. We could trade memes. It's the future of the economy. Yeah, the meme market is strong. Do Doge coin? Doge Doge? Is it Doge or Doge? I don't know. I think it's Doge. I've always pronounced it Doge. I've pronounced it Doge as well, but when you think about it, it says D O G E. Maybe it's like Doggy. Doggy? 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 Doggy. Doggy. I sound like Tommy Wiseau right there. <laughs> hey, Doggy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I suppose if you're listening to this, then you have probably just had the most fantastic Easter weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at least we hope you've had the great. Uh, great Weaster Easter weekend. Great Weaster weekend. Oh, I, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> I tell you what, man. <laughs> we hope that you've had a great Easter weekend. Whether you spent it going away on holiday uh, or camping, um, spending it with family, uh, whether you chocolate, mm, maybe all of the above, maybe all of the above at once. Maybe you went to uh, Easter mass or Easter service at your church. Um, I know that we certainly have and uh, big weekend for us as pastors. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember actually when I was living in uh, Melbourne yeah. and we every Easter would go away to what we call big camp. Mm. So basically constructing a tent city and it would be out in, oh gosh, it was out somewhere near Bendigo if you're familiar with Victoria. Bendigo. Bendigo. Yeah. And man, it was a crazy busy weekend. All weekend, so shout out if I don't know if they're doing it this year because I haven't really kept up to date. But shout out to all my Melbourne Melbourne family hey. who are listening, who have been out to big camp this weekend, or if if it was this weekend. Very nice, yeah, Very nice indeed. Because there's no reception out there, you generally don't find out if anybody had it until <laughs> until later. That's actually kind of a good thing, hey, because when you go camping, you want to kind of be separated away from the rest of your life. You know, it's like this is a new thing we're going on. We're not going to be checking Facebook or Instagram. We're just going to enjoy nature. I mean, that's like that's the best way to do it, right? I oh, suppose. Yeah. Absolutely. But man, that place would get cold, eh? It was just really? dead flat. You couldn't really see a hill. In a 360 degree look around. It was really bizarre. Wow. So when the sun would set, man, it would just get so cold mm. so fast. Wow. Sounds awesome. <laughs> 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 yes. Sounds a lot like Palmy, actually, to be honest. Just, yeah. You know, nice, nice and flat. Well, we have the big mountains just behind yeah. that we can see. Yeah. I'm like pointing to it like the people on the podcast can Absolutely. see. Absolutely. I mean, but you guys just point over there. Yeah. Just look there. if you just look over there, yeah, you can see right. this way. The that um way? I actually have no idea. Okay. I think they're just kind of all that way. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um south. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful hills slash mountains mm. with wind turbines blowing. It's quite it's quite nice. But where we were in near Bendigo, nothing. Yeah. No hills. Wow. Can't see a thing. Just flat. Sounds everywhere. like Australia. Sounds like Australia. Flattest, flattest continent? Flattest country? Um, it'd be up there. I, I'd say so. I haven't been to any other continents. Actually, I was going to say many, but I, I haven't been to any other continents, so I really wouldn't know. I've yes, seen... you have. What? Didn't you go to Mauritius? That's Is part that of... A... Oh, I suppose that's technically part of Africa. But sure. I've never, I've never been to mainland Africa, so I've been to islands. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess you've still been to another continent. That was not very flat. It was flat in parts, but it was mostly mountains. Mauritius? Yeah, lots of mountains around. Volcanic islands, a volcanic island. Right. Yeah, like it, it originated apparently originally from a whole series of volcanoes rising out of the ocean. Um, so if you want to ever visit Mauritius, you know, ex-volcanic island. I do hear it's magical. It is quite nice. It mm. is quite nice, yes. It is, it is a lovely place. Um, my, for those of you podcast listeners who don't know, um, uh, my wife is originally from Mauritius Well, her parents were em- immigrants. So that is the connection. I'm not in any way, shape or form Mauritian, but. Are you sure? Um, I, well, no, to be honest, <laughs> probably not. I, maybe I am. I haven't done really an ancestry check. So maybe I am. That's I don't know. I, I want to do an ancestry 
yeah. test so bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't, I think uh, my mum is doing one. Okay. So that should tell you a lot. Yeah. So I'll report back, listeners. That'll give stay you tuned. approximately 50% though of your ancestry. Yeah. So then I have to do, you have to get your I, dad I to do one. I need to get one, one done myself. Yeah. So anyway, back to. Uh... <laughs> so what we actually want to talk about yep. is Easter. So Easter's just come by. Whether you're religious or not, it's a big deal. It's one of those. It's like Christmas. Christmas and Easter yeah. are kind of like the two big world holidays, I suppose. World, ho- well, Western world at least. Western holidays, about- yeah, definitely Western. You know, yeah. If, if anybody knows anything about, uh, you know, outside the Western world, um, what is with that? Easter, Hanukkah, Passover festival, yeah, for the Jews, and then you have like other various cultural. Uh, Chinese New Year is oh, always true. a big deal. Becoming yeah. a bigger deal in the Western world too. Yeah, it is the, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember we actually had a big celebration here in Palmy, I think. At the oh, that's cool. For this year. But anyway, it's not Chinese New Year anymore. It's Easter now. <laughs> so whether you've had a celebration in Easter, whether you just bought some Easter bunnies, whether you completely disregarded it altogether, we're going to talk about it today. Because mm. um, it is a big deal. Yeah, in the Western world, whether you're religious or not, it is it is one of those things. Oh yeah, like man, the supermarkets just go crazy for yeah. Easter, and then at the end, when like Easter's over and they're trying to sell off all the Easter bunnies that nobody bought, it's like <laughs> you can just stock up. You How know? old are they? No, no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I I love it to be honest. I, I love any festive season. I'm just on fire for festive seasons. I love yeah. them. Um, so I suppose the reason we're bringing it up is because. For those of you who have spent a lot of time around the church world, uh, maybe you've grown up in church, or you've you know you, you spend a lot, a lot of time around um, some fellow believers, there is a, a I suppose a wave of people who they really they really get it's like the hairs on their hairs on the back of their neck really stand up around Easter. They get really frustrated because um, for them they don't think it's something that people who follow Jesus should celebrate. Yeah, they feel as though it has. Well, I, I suppose there's there's pagan origins. Yeah, yeah, um, and so you know they get a really up in arms, and um, maybe it's fair enough. I don't know, but they. I, I I think it comes from. Well, yeah, it does come from. Uh, I think Easter is a f- originally what a fertility fertility festival. Yeah, so depending on who you talk to, will net you different responses, different. Um, origin stories. Mm. Some of the most common ones that Josh and I have both heard is in relation to the Sumerian goddess Ishtar, or some say Inanna. Um, there's also Inanna. 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 You know the one. Inanna. Yep. Inanna. <laughs> Everybody knows Inanna. Everybody knows. A spaghetti. No, no it's definitely... Somebody touch my spaghetti. Oh. There's the meme. There's the meme. The meme quote is up, everybody. The episode. That's honestly my favorite meme right now. Is Anybody it? trading in meme currencies? That's my primary meme. Wow. Hit me I with a, that somebody touching my spaghetti. Yeah. It's, it's a bit old now, but I love it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so Ishtar, Inanna, also Horus, apparently the Egyptian god Horus. Wow. Um, but there's also there's also a um, a certain um, stream of people who uh, equate and and compare the um, Anglo-Saxon Celtic goddess Eostre, which sounds most similar to Easter Eostre. Mm. Um, so th- there's all these different sources um, from all these different pagan roots that people compare with the celebration of Easter today. Yeah. I suppose I suppose for me, like it's really difficult when I talk to different people about it because there seems to be almost this knee-jerk reaction that if it's pagan, that means it's evil. Like that seems to be the prevailing thought, right? Yeah, yeah, I think a lot of people I think a lot of people run into that and I think it is fair enough to look up the history of these things. And it's always interesting searching through history because obviously the Bible doesn't really talk about Easter. It doesn't no. talk about Christmas. No. Uh, so <laughs> often you're like, well, hang on, where does this come from? And you look back and you'll actually be good to see a lot of this. Oh, it actually does come from... It, it is important. Pagan 
you know, um, idea and, and a lot of people, you know, they, they quote verses like, you know, you should be, what is it in the, in the world, but not of the world. The and world, they feel like, Oh, you know, that's pagan. They, I have to throw it all away. Like they yes. get really scared and yes. it's a fair concern. You know, it's, it's, it's kind of conflicting. I know I've definitely felt that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think probably, I mean, let's, one thing I think we should probably define before we get into all of this is what is paganism? Like, People often just say, they throw around this term, it's pagan or it's pagan in origin, mm. but we don't actually understand what paganism is, yeah. right? I mean, a lot of people might even just think it's some sort of spice. Mm, this has got a bit of a pagan pagan spice on top. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, when I first heard like, it's pagan, I honestly, the first thing I thought was, is that some sort of like dish or delicacy? Well, like cinnamon? Yeah. <laughs> That's honestly when I felt, that was like when I was Are a teenager. Are you serious? When I was a teenager, yeah. Oh. I didn't know what pagan was. Oh, fair enough, I guess. They said, "Oh, it's pagan." And I was like, "Is it a country? Is it like?" <laughs> a, you know? All right. So, um, here's the thing: a lot of people hear pagan, but when they say pagan, what they really mean is like Satanism, yeah. right? Like evil, like evil and incar- darkness, yeah, and burning babies and oh, my you know, human sacrifices. That's what we think. Pagan yep. equals blood, darkness, dark rituals, Satanism. Demon worship. Demon and, worship. Yeah. Yep. All of this stuff. Um, when in actual fact, paganism just simply means something that belongs to a religion or a faith tradition outside the mainstream, right? Yeah. So whether so if we define what's the mainstream, that's what Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, those are generally yep. today considered major world religions. So, so pa- we, paganism is what any any practice that falls outside of anything those. that falls outside. Paganism doesn't automatically mean evil. <laughs> okay. That's that's probably the big thing that I want people to understand. Like if you're listening to this and you think paganism just means evil, it doesn't. Evil is evil. Paganism is a different category altogether. Right, yeah. So I guess, yeah, there's a little word association with it that you, you just jump to. Like, yeah. oh my gosh, pagan equals... So, so, pagan so, so, equals so. evil. Yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, and even like, like we're not going to talk about this book too much, but there's a great book that a lot of Christians have read, Pagan Christianity, right? Which talks about where a lot of our Christian traditions come from. And that's one of the things that they hammer home in that book, that pagan doesn't necessarily mean evil it just means it comes from a different tradition now yeah. we would actually love to do a podcast just we, talking we about probably that probably will one day i think it'd be really i haven't good. finished reading it so yeah. when i finish and we'll talk about it eh? yeah well i think we'll do a podcast on it in probably this year sometime i'm sure i yeah. don't want to put it <laughs> yeah but i don't know i'm sure i, I reckon it'd be really interesting yeah, yeah. um and that's that's, I suppose, when you're defining paganism, yeah, you gotta you gotta jump to what does a word actually mean? And so, yeah. yes, obviously it is a pagan a pagan tradition. Yeah, and and pagan that, that's the origin. Thing, that's the thing that we should really be honest about. And the fact is Easter and Christmas, which we, we don't need to talk about Christmas, that's a bit different. But Easter as a tradition absolutely comes from a tradition that is not rooted or based in Christianity or Judaism. That's a fact. Yeah. I mean, even if you even if you look at Easter, I mean, we, you can pretty clearly see a lot of... Um, because uh, obviously it comes from Northern Hemisphere. Yes. Um, so even us Australians and Kiwis, um, it doesn't really make much sense to celebrate here because it um, it's a festival definitely portraying spring, um, yep. new life, new birth, fertility. Yep. It's really, you know... Bunnies. bunnies we even say today oh they mate like rabbits or something not mm. a very wholesome phrase but Eggs it's because well. rabbits multiply mm. a lot they're very fertile little animals um eggs all around everywhere there's obviously a lot of symbols of it even today um so i mean it is pretty i guess it is kind of obvious maybe not so much because we've saturated so much in consumerism and marketing but um and chocolate but i think um you, you can see it like you, you, totally. you can't be blind to it. Totally. Like we, Josh and I are pretty much like I would say personally, I am anti um, conspiracy theory in terms of being a paranoid person or like yeah. trying to see the devil in around every corner. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. But with the the historical context that we have, with the historical evidence we have, 
that yeah, it's pretty it's pretty obvious. This is definitely a tradition rooted in ancient paganism. That's a fact. So then the issue comes around, what do, what do we do with it? If yeah. you want to follow Jesus, should you be partaking in this season like what do we what do you do yeah. how, how do you even react to this and it's a it's a it's a valid question to ask super valid yeah so there's a stream of thought which we're all super familiar with which is if it's e- if it's pagan pagan it's evil and if it's evil and pagan then we should throw it out completely now the problem with this stream of thought is that it's actually a fairly pagan idea <laughs> altogether. Okay. Irony. I, exactly. <laughs> so, so, so journey with me, if you will. Imagine that you're in a tribe back in the old days. The old, back in the day. Back in the day. And you belong to whatever tribe, let's say Boogledy Boo tribe. <laughs> All right. <laughs> And you're. I a, want to be a part of the Boogledy Boo tribe. <laughs> <laughs> so you're part of you're part of the Boogledy Boo tribe, <laughs> and a few a few hills over is the Widgety Doo tribe. <laughs> All right, so you got it's tribe, so hard to take tribe, seriously. Tribe. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> okay. This may have been a mistake. Um, I love it. Keep going. Tribe Boogledy Boo tribe Widgety Doo <laughs> live in relative peace. But they don't like each other. They're like the hostile siblings. Right. Yep. All right. And so each has a wise man. Each has a shaman or a cleric or something like a wise guy. And they ask questions about the universe and about reality and about life itself. Now, if you're in Tribe Boogly Boo, you are not going to want to go to the Tribe Widgety Doo. Widgety Doo? Widgety Doo. Widgety Doo? Yep. Get it right, Jesse. <laughs> you're not going to go to their wise guy. Because he belongs to a different tribe. Right. Right? So if, if you belong to your tribe, you ask your leaders and you ask your wise man for advice and for interpreting the world around you. You're not going to go to the other person's tribe because it's part of another tribe. Right. So if you fall into the category, if you're a Christian, or, or even if you're not a Christian, a lot of Christians have this, non-Christians have this as, as well. If you go, okay... Easter originated in a pagan world, in a pagan context, which means I can't celebrate it. It's not compatible with my Christian faith. I'm not going to do it. And then I'm going to try and force my beliefs on other people. That is a deeply, deeply tribalistic, ancient, and might I add, pagan way of thinking. You might just add that. (laughs) (laughs) Which is kind of hilarious in itself. Yeah. You know that... You're using pagan understand you're using pagan reasoning to interpret what is supposedly a modern christian uh, predicament yep and if you if you listen to last week's podcast um we did talk about video games um and we talked about when as a christian and engaging with culture um we gave that thing from um mark driscoll his little uh, phrase that he used it's like when you engage with culture you receive you reject or you redeem it yeah uh, which i just i still love i still love that um and so that is i think the much more like mature approach to take to this like yeah. you actually have to engage ask real questions and understand and even um actually if you got the if you got the article there jesse mm. um so you actually looked up the guy who wrote the book pagan christianity because yeah. you think you know what he literally wrote the book on paganism and Christianity and how he believes... I think the whole premise is, is that he... Um, or premise, sorry. Is that he goes... And he believes that the, there are pagan practices that the Christian church does today yeah. that actually hinder the church. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting that um, there's actually an article that we found and it's an interview with um, good old mate Frank Viola. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, Jesse, if you want to... Yeah, so in the book Pagan Christianity, if you have read it, you will note that they don't talk about um, Christmas and Easter all that much. And um, he, he wrote an article in response to people's questions. Um, and the question is this, in Pagan Christianity, you address many of the pagan traditions that have shaped the modern church. But how come you never discuss the so-called Christian holidays like Christmas and Easter, which also have 
pagan roots. We'll link this in the show notes. But basically, he responds sort of along the line of how Josh has just described, that there are certain things that we um, receive, certain things we reject, and certain things we redeem. And he talks about how in the early Christian church, the um, church leaders of the day in uh, the early centuries following the birth and the explosion of the Christian church looked at the traditions and the holidays and the celebrations that their pagan neighbors, their pagan brothers and sisters were celebrating and they redeemed them. In Mm. other words, they took them on board and they actually turned the focus from something which was not honoring God or something that was completely different and put the language that people had already been using to describe the Christian experience, specifically in the case of Easter, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And the, um, the, the celebration of spring, that new life. New life. The new life that you see around in spring yeah. is a beautiful, I mean, even now, is a beautiful reflection on the new life that what Christ did on the cross and his resurrection. It's a new life that we receive. Mm. What I mean, and what better time to have a reminder of that than spring? I mean, yeah, like here, we're about to, we're hitting autumn, so we're seeing a whole lot of things die. So we're kind of yeah. like, oh, this sucks. But, you know, in the, in the Northern <laughs> Hemisphere right now, in the Northern Hemisphere, it's totally, it would have totally spoken to these people. It would have, it's like, it's like you're taking what people already know and putting and injecting new knowledge and new life and, and new understanding into that concept. Fascinating and mm. brilliant as well, because clearly it worked. In, in the sense of leading people to the cross. Absolutely. And so I think the value here is that in redeeming, we can actually use, again, this is very much flowing on from last week's episode about video games. Yeah. Um, it's using culture to teach. A, a great and simple example of this is that um, even Jesse and I right now are doing something very um, non-biblical, to teach the Bible, yeah. and that is that we're speaking English. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and a lot of people, re- re- you know, don't even think about this. But the Bible wasn't written in English. Jesus definitely did not speak English mm. because I'm not even sure English existed then. English may have existed in the form of very ancient Celtish, oh. possibly, but definitely not. Definitely no, no. Yeah, English not, did not, not like exist. Today. So, and nowhere near where these guys were. Um, And so, you you have to use the language of people to speak to people. If somebody came up to try and teach the Bible to me and they started speaking, you know, ancient Aramaic and Greek and Hebrew, oh my goodness. Yeah. Like, I would just think they're a crazy person and just walk away. I mean, no offense to people who speak the languages, but you know what I mean? I just wouldn't understand it. And so, you have to speak in a way that people understand. And we actually see this a lot in scripture. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Um, one example I would love to use is comes from, and you have probably heard this, um, this Bible passage before. Mm. Um, and it comes from John chapter 1, verse 1. People quote this. I love that people quote this in church all the time and yeah. have absolutely no idea <laughs> about the depth of it. Um, and so I'll, I'll read it for you guys. Uh, and this is from the English Standard Version. So more English, everybody. Um, from John chapter 1. And we're going to read verses 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through Him, and without Him, was not anything made that was made. A little bit confusing, that English there, but anyway. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome overcome it. Mm. Very poetic, very beautiful. Yeah. Uh, The Greek word there uh, for word is logos. So, Jesse, unpack for a little bit. What, What is the logos all about? So in, in ancient Greek thought um, and in ancient Roman thought as well, you had a hierarchy of beings. You had human beings, which were kind of at the bottom of the ladder. They were top in terms of the animal kingdom, but they were at the bottom in terms of the higher beings of the world. Yeah. 
above human beings, you had the gods, Mount Olympus, Mount Olympus. You had Zeus and Apollo and Hera and all these crazy gods, which were like basically glorified superheroes, you know, because mm. they were gods, but they were also incredibly like humans in many ways. Yeah, you know, <laughs> they were they fought with each other. They were they were envious. They were lustful. They all these different very human attributes. Above the gods were the Titans, you know. The Titan Kronos was famously the uh, father of Zeus. Right. Who then overthrew his father to establish this pantheon. But then above the Titans is a big question mark. What's what's above the most powerful beings that the universe has ever seen? Fun fact about the whole pantheon and Titans thing. If you've ever played World of Warcraft... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is actually where I first learnt about the whole Pantheon and Titans thing because that's actually a part of the World of Warcraft lore wow. which borrows and, and yeah. steals from all sorts of different um, what mythologies and yeah, there's stuff in there from Crazy. all over the world and all different um, <laughs> so I remember like when, when we were first talking about this and I was thinking back, I'm like, man, where have I heard that whole Pantheon and Titans and Titans are above them? And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's from World of Warcraft. Like, that's insane. So you might have heard this before, even if you've watched um, Hercules, Disney's yeah. Hercules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. That had Titans and stuff in it as yeah, well. And that's it. That's like, it. Unleash the Titans. <laughs> Clash of the Titans as well. Clash of Clans, not jokes. Clash of Clans. <laughs> so, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's, a very, it's actually a very popular thing, even today. Yeah. But what we fail to remember is this was actually a real stream of thought. This was even, the mainstream. Even in Avengers, you know, the ultimate bad guy for Infinity War, the upcoming, you know, two-parter, it's Thanos, the Titan. He's oh, a Titan. Oh, I never realized that. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole race of Titans. I don't know. I'm not really clued up with the um, Marvel lore. I don't know if there are any other Titans. There might be or there might have been, but I know Thanos is a Titan. Um, wow. And, of course... Um, Thor is is from is from Norse mythology, which is also very close to Greek mythology as well. He's actually from Australian mythology. Chris <laughs> He's Hemsworth. From Hemsworthian <laughs> mythology. <laughs> anyway. Okay, yep. okay, so the Logos, the Logos is this thing that's above everything, right? Yep. The Logos in the Greek understanding, and we there was a whole heap of de- debate amongst um, Greek and Roman philosophers as to the true nature of the Logos, what it constitutes the Logos, um, how you can describe the Logos. Uh, scholars generally agree that John the Apostle, who is penning this letter to Greeks, to Romans, to Gentiles, essentially people who aren't Jews, he is drawing on Stoic thought. So the Stoics were this branch of Greek philosophy. And they believed that the Logos was the highest order being or entity in the universe. It was the mechanism or um, reasoning by which the entire universe was constructed and ordered. It was essentially ultimate reality. The right. thing behind the thing behind the thing <laughs> which gives life and sustains everything. The thing behind the thing behind the thing that gives life and is the thing. And yeah. Sustains everything. Yeah. Beautiful. Just <laughs> stunning use of language. But no, actually very true. Yeah. Very true. It's like the chicken and the egg argument. It's like who? Can, what came first, the chicken and the egg? The logos is the thing which came before the chicken and the egg, or the chicken or the egg, yep. which gave rise to the chicken or the egg. I don't know. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the logos. Yep. And so so when John is, when John is writing and he is saying... God became a human being. He's not just saying that God became a human being. He's not just saying that Zeus became a human being or Hercules, a demigod, became a human being, even though Hercules was, is half human, half God, whatever. He's not even saying that. That would have been one thing, but he's drawing upon this very deep, rich understanding of the way the universe is ordered in order to talk to these Gentiles. So... We see in this in this sense that John is not just taking their culture and smashing it into a million pieces and yeah. saying, you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, you're wrong. I'm right. You just got to believe this new thing that I'm giving to you. Yeah. He is actually seeing the truth that's in their culture already. Yeah. And interestingly enough about that, a lot of people make this kind of, and you see it in movies and all sort of thing. You see this comparison between 
um, the Christian God mm. and Zeus, mm. when really John here is actually being like, uh, no, Zeus is like way too low to be oh, God. Yeah. And then there's the Titan above Zeus. And then he's like, no, let's go further. It's yeah. more like the Logos. Yeah. And that is that is reaching deep into into their whole psyche, their whole worldview. This yeah. idea of like in the beginning was the Logos. And they're like, okay. If you want to get in and deeper, study the Logos, man. Honestly, it is it is like it is so incredibly deep and just awesome. Um, yeah, so cool. And so he starts off on that that note that they can agree on. He's like, in the beginning was the word, the logos. And so they're like, oh yep, yep, I, I can agree with that. Yeah, cool. Yeah, easy. Yeah, we are, we already know that. So here, John is he's building a bridge. You know, he's he's not just smashing apart everything they know. He is building a bridge that they can walk across, yep. which is which is essentially what Jesus did as well every day of the week yeah. using parables, speaking people's language, using terminology that the people understood. Yeah, absolutely. Like farming analogies and the lost coin. Everybody's lost lost a coin, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then he, he builds on it a little bit. The Logos was with God. Oh, no, sorry. The Logos was was God. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And the Logos was with God. Okay. Right, yep. He was in the beginning with God. Oh, okay. So it's like two separate. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, okay. That's making sense. All things were made through him. Yeah, totally agree with that. And without him, not anything that was made was made. Yeah, in him was life. Yeah, totally. And life was the light of men. Oh, so it cares about us. Yeah. You know, it's like slowly chipping in. And then he, he builds his argument up until um, verse 14 of chapter one, where he talks about, and then the word became flesh. And and really, if you understand that idea of logos, that's the offensive part for the Greeks. Because it's like, wait, what? The <laughs> ultimate reality steps into a mortal frame. That is super offensive the logos became flesh and dwelt among us yeah that is just mind bending for them yeah like not even a titan would do that not even zeus really no. ha- like hardly did the that gods. he had his mount olympus that he sits yeah. on the gods came down to human beings to procreate to mess with people to you know tr- play with people but they were super duper elitist you know like they thought themselves so much higher and the thing above the gods, which is above the thing that's above the gods, which is above probably even the thing that's above that yeah. thing, <laughs> that thing became a human being. And that thing said, I want to have relationship. I want to have communion. I want to have, a, you know, I want to be with you and I want you to be with me and, and I don't want to transform you. That is transcendent and offensive and beautiful. Yeah. So John right there is using their culture and redeeming it to teach them. Yeah. And this is John 1. We read this all the time in churches. You see it in videos. You see it on posters. You see it everywhere. And yet we don't even realize that realistically that is inspired of Greek thought. It's not an original. Yeah. Well, I guess it's original the way he did it. But it's this idea that he totally takes somebody else's culture, a pagan idea, and redeems it to teach them who Jesus was and why. And then you can see how rapidly it, the, the, the message spread even among Gentiles about Jesus. Talking about the early church, it's crazy. And I, th- I think today people know um, arch- archetypal stories. I don't. It's a Jesse word for me. I'm, I'm learning it from Jesse. But you, you want to define that- what archetype is, Josh? Nope. <laughs> Maybe. No, no, you, you do it better. Okay. But people know stories, like what we yeah. talked about with the Avengers. Yeah. People know the idea of a hero and a villain. and Yeah. I mean, um, superhero movies are very similar, samey. You know, yes. You, you, watch, you so. watch a superhero movie, you always know it's going to go through the same thing. Hero is a nobody, perhaps, you know. Then they get lifted from their um, low station by a mentor, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, a Gandalf, if you will. And then they're imbued with these powers, whether it's through an accident or whether it's through training or a radioactive spider. Radioactive spider. There you go. <laughs> and then they, they come in conflict with a, a bad guy and the stakes are laid and um, they have an encounter usually with the bad guy and they get beaten up and then that just pushes their resolve even harder. Maybe they get to the point of giving up 
Yeah. But then they train hard and they go through all the the trials and the tests they need to get through. They face the bad guy and then just as it seems like they're about to face defeat, they triumph or they sacrifice themselves for the greater good and then are resurrected mm-hmm. in many cases, in the case of Superman, in the case of Dark Knight, the Dark Knight, Harry Potter, all the same, you know, all the same. And so these 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 are archetypal stories because they draw on themes which resonate deeply with human beings. The the stories of heroism, the story of of the plucky farm boy yeah. becoming a hero, becoming someone, no a, a nobody becoming a somebody. Um somebody rising up, pledging oneself to a a story or 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 a or a thing a thing or an idea or a concept that is greater than yourself and then ultimately giving your life for that thing so that other people can benefit can be saved the galaxy can be saved you Absolutely. know uh, that's the power of the archetypal story and that's why you see them over and over again you might groan every time you go and see X Avengers movie or X Batman movie because it's like it's the same thing over and over again. But there is a good reason why those stories are so popular. Um, it's because they're archetypal. And there's perhaps no story that's more archetypal than the story of Jesus and the story of, yeah, Easter. And that's that, that beautiful story of love sacrifice like love that defies the odds and that sacrifice for us and yeah even you know the great becoming low to it's just this like it feels like a common story today mm. but really it all originates from this one great beautiful story that we have in the bible yeah this great controversy that stems throughout history and and in through like the scriptures we see it and and it speaks to us today and it's, it's speaking this beautiful story. And I think so many people know the story and they see it done through so many, so much media. And really, it's reminding them, of, reminding all of us of this great story that we're actually a part of, like really a part of. And that's sort of the beauty of, um, you know, something like Easter coming around every year, you know, especially, you know, what I'm saying, that celebration of new life stopping for a time to celebrate, to look and reflect, to, to spend time with family, to crack open eggs and eat <laughs> chocolate. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the sweetness of yeah. new life, the sweetness of, of all of this. I think it's a beautiful time. And I think when people, I don't know, when people waste that entire time leading up to Easter and post Easter over the weekend... And all they're doing is spending all that time lifting up Ishtar or whatever. Mm. That feels like a wasted opportunity to me. Absolutely. It's like, what are you putting the spotlight on right now? Yeah. You're killing the beauty. Yeah. Yeah. Like, look, it's all about this and that and that. How dare you have chocolate Ishtar eggs? Sorry, that's my... (laughs) (laughs) Not thinking about anybody in particular. (laughs) No, no. Like... I don't know. I haven't had that many bad experiences with it, but you see people, I see people rage online about it. All Facebook the is the, probably the worst culprit for this. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. And I just feel that, you know, you've got this opportunity to, to reclaim, to redeem mm. like what we're saying. And yeah, okay. Maybe, maybe there are parts of Easter you want to reject. Maybe you don't want to spend the whole weekend um, promoting fluffy bunnies and chocolate eggs, whatever. Yeah. The whole thing is a commercialized mess anyway oh absolutely so that's that that's a given you know even if you're not a christian it's like well do i really want to buy into the greed of consumerism yeah anyway it's like you partake a little bit but if you must but if you don't have to completely buy into the corporate greed of it all mm. then obviously you wouldn't and it feels so far removed like oh, I, yeah. I'll, there was this amazing article um that i read by uh, dave edgren Pastor Dave Edgren um, used to work for the church in, in Victoria. We'll put a link to this as well. Yeah, um, great article. Well yeah, worth. great article. And I love this kind of part at the end. And he, he talks about, um, I don't know if I can find the quote. Um, oh, yeah. It's like, never in all my years of collecting, purchasing or hiding Easter eggs have I been encountered by a fellow participant, shop owner or neighbor who said, thank Ishtar for this new season and this lovely <laughs> gift of chocolate. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he goes on to actually say, if I did hear those words, I would actually stop and, you know, he actually said, I would have the most vigorous conversation with them. <laughs> I love that. I love that choice of words. And vigorous. It's a moment to actually um, to engage with it. Yeah. But, I mean, you never see that because it is so far removed from Ishtar and all that stuff anyway. Like nobody thinks about that when they're out buying chocolate Easter eggs to throw around the garden so the kids can go and find them in the morning. What they're thinking about is creating a fun experience for their kids and a great time with their family. Mm. And and we've we've readily admitted that there is 100% pagan, quote unquote, um, origin for this thing. We're, we're not going to deny that. But even if, let's, for the sake of the argument, that this pagan thing still had satanic power in it or devil worshipping power in it, we're not seeing that happening. So mm. why would we give it more power than it deserves? Honestly, no. like, that's a question we have to grapple with it ourselves. Absolutely. And so that's what I suppose at the end of the day, <laughs> at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> we're uh, wrapping this up. Don't think about it anymore. <laughs> Just believe what we tell you. I suppose I always think back to... Um, John, you know, to continue in John, same guy who wrote what we were talking about before, John chapter 12, verse 32. I love this verse. And he said, um, and it's Jesus talking. And, it's, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Yeah. You know, there's kind of, a, you know, onions, a lot of layers here. There are a couple of layers. There's a bit of a... I prefer parfaits. What? what? What's it's like Shrek, you know, the, you know, Shrek's like, Ogres are like onions. Yeah. And then Donkey's like, what about a parfait? You know? <laughs> Parfaits have that. layers. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Anyway. No, no, it was good. It was good. Um and he's obviously like there's a there's a prophecy about himself being lifted up on the cross. But at the same time, I can't help but feel it's a reminder for us to lift up Jesus in our everyday life. And when he is lifted up, when he's the one lifted up in all areas. He's the one who draws people to himself and draws people into that deeper deeper and greater relationship and greater experience of life, that whole new way of being human. Mm. So I just feel that with Easter, every year with Easter and Christmas even, maybe we'll touch on maybe we'll touch on Christmas at the end of the year. We'll do a Christmas special. <laughs> <laughs> but um if you're given an opportunity to lift up Jesus, which you are every year, twice a year, yeah. for a whole weekend. Yeah. You should take the opportunity. Don't yeah. spend the time lifting up Ishtar because maybe that's more pagan. Yeah. But spend the time lifting up Jesus. Spend the time remembering new life, promoting new life, promoting, promoting the new way of being human that we have in Jesus and celebrating mm. that. Mm. And yeah, for sure. Take or leave whatever you want from consumeristic Easter, whatever. Like if you don't want to have a big fluffy giant rabbit around, just don't do it. Don't do it. Wow. But what, if, a, yeah. what, a, what a revolutionary idea. <laughs> Who would have thought, right? I mean, Josh, Josh and I's heart with this podcast, with Burn, with Burn the Haystack, has, has been from the start that we want to be able to let go of those traditions and give you, the listener, the freedom to let go of some of those traditions which are harmful, which hinder your growth into becoming a whole fully integrated person but there are parts of our tradition which are holy and are sacred and should be reclaimed and should be lifted up and this is one of the best examples of the story of jesus who came down to this earth who lived a perfect life ministered taught healed and then voluntarily gave himself as a sacrifice for all humanity on the mm. cross and then rose again on the third day i mean what a beautiful picture. What a beautiful picture. Absolutely. So if you're given an opportunity to lift up Jesus, take it mm. every time. That is your responsibility as a Jesus follower, to continue to lift him up, to continue to push forward with it. Yeah. And that, for me, is absolutely exhilarating. Yeah, 100%. And mm. I honestly have nothing more to say than that because I think that's that's... That's it, isn't it? That's it. That's it. So let us know your thoughts. Maybe you thought we were completely wrong and we're absolute, I don't know, 
Heretics? What? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> bring it on. Yeah, bring it Yeah, send yeah. us a message. We'd love to hear about it, honestly. Yeah. We are so happy to engage because this, again, this is a conversation. Yeah. This and isn't us just telling you. This is a conversation. We want to hear what you have to say. We want you to think about it. And if you um, enjoyed what you heard, please consider subscribing um, to this podcast. And if you um, have the time, leave a review. They really help. Um, and on your podcast app of choice, we would really appreciate to hear your feedback. Your feedback is all noted. We read all of it and we just yeah, want to hear more of it, hear what you guys are thinking. Yep. And the Facebook page, Josh and Jesse, I'm sure you can find it. Um, yeah. Leave us a comment. Send us a message. Yeah. Um, or if something really resonated with you, put it on a t-shirt, carve it on a piece of wood, graffiti it on a <laughs> something that's not illegal, obviously. Write a post about it. We love to hear about this stuff. Anything that's touching you and helping you or send us a message and we'll talk about it. Yeah. We respond to all of our messages, I believe. I don't think we've missed any. <laughs> uh, quickly go and check. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, we, we really endeavor to engage with everybody and we've been hearing some really cool um, yeah, thoughts from people and yeah. some people sharing some Facebook statuses about it. They're just... I, they make me laugh. So <laughs> please keep keep talking, keep the conversation yeah. going. Um, be equipped, have fun, burn some haystacks, metaphorically. Not not physically, because farmers farmers are people. Yeah. We'll <laughs> talk to you again soon, guys. Josh and Jesse out. Yeah.